Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to factor the sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes. Now, if you haven't done so already, you might want to look back at some of the other videos I've uh, created dealing with factoring uh, before we get into this. Because, so then that way you kind of have a better understanding of how to factor in some of the more basic cases or basic situations for factoring. But let's go ahead and let's look at this. This, is the, uh, this box here describes how we're going to factor a sum of two cubes and a difference of two cubes. Now, you do have to have this process memorized. When you first look at that, that might look like a lot of x's and y's to memorize, but and a lot of symbols to try to memorize. But to make it easier, there's a little acronym that we can use to uh, simplify this for us. And that acronym is SOAP, S-O-A-P. And so to help us out, I kind of colored coded things to uh, organize some information for us better. So if you notice, if we have x cubed plus y cubed, what follows is going to be an x plus y. And after that, we're going to have x squared minus xy plus y squared. But to help us keep that straight, we can use that acronym SOAP. And what it stands for is S stands for the same sign. So in the first parentheses there, you're going to have the same sign as what you started out with x cubed plus y cubed, you're going to start with the same sign of being a plus in between the x and the y. And then in, in descending order, we're going to have x squared in parentheses, followed by the x and the y being multiplied by, and then after that, we're going to have the y squared. Now what goes in between there is going to be next is going to be the opposite sign. So the opposite sign of what we started out with, we started out with x cubed plus y cubed, so the opposite of that would be a minus. And then the last symbol there is always going to be positive. So that's where the soap comes in. So now if we had x cubed minus y cubed, well, between the x and the y, you're going to start with the same sign, so it's going to be a minus, followed by the opposite sign, which would be a plus, and then it's always going to be positive. And so if you notice, the, other, the terms are still always the same, x squared in parentheses, we have x squared, xy, and y squared. It's just that in between there, the signs are going to differ. And again, using that SOAP technique, that'll help you um, figure out what those symbols should be. Now, there's a couple of situations that we could use to apply these sum and differences of squares. Now, I'm going to scroll up in a second. There's an example I want to do before we look at these uh, examples here that we have on my left. So let's take a minute now to look at the example that's going to be above this box. So here's a scenario that we could use to apply that um, sum or difference of cubes theorem. Where we have, they ask, they're asking us to find the three cubed roots of 64. Essentially what they're asking for is they're asking for what three numbers could I cube to get 64. So we could look at it like this, or if I want to get it as a difference of cubes, I could subtract 64 from both sides. And I would get x cubed minus 64 equals 0. So I want to factor that x cubed minus 64 down. Now, if you notice, it looks like it might be a difference of cubes. And to test that out or figure out if it is a difference of cubes, all you do is you say, well, can I take the cube root of the first term? Yeah, the cube root of the first term is just x. Can I take the cube root of 64? Yes, the cube root of 64 is 4, because 4 times itself, 3 times gives me 64. So what we have now is um, my value for x in this equation would just be x. My value for y here is going to be 4. So I'm going to apply this second rule here for a difference of two cubes. So this would be, in factored form, it would be x minus 4 times x squared. And then it's going to be plus, because it's going to be the, starts out with the same sign. Now it's going to be the opposite sign. But in the middle here, it's going to be x times y, well, which is going to be 4 times x. And then that's going to be ending with, it's always positive, ending with 4 squared, which is 16. So this would be the factored form. Now what I want to do is I want to find all of the um, cubed roots of 64. So I'm going to set, and again, this should be equal to 0. So I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0. Well, x minus 4, when I set that equal to 0, I would just get 4. So one of my solutions is going to be 4. Now I have to figure out, well, what are the other solutions going to be? Well, that x squared plus 4x plus 16, that is not factorable using real numbers. And I'm going to, we'll talk about why here in a future video. But there's an easy way to figure out what, 
x would have to be, and that would just be to use the quadratic formula. So I am going to take and use a quadratic formula. So it's going to be where my a would be 1, my b would be 4, and my c would be 16. So to find out what my other value for x would be, or other values, I'm going to take the opposite of b, which would be negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, well, 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 16. All of that is going to be divided by 2 times a, which is just 2 times 1, is just 2. So let's simplify with what's underneath the radical. Actually, I'll get a smaller root than that. Well, when I simplify that, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times 16 is negative 64. And 16 minus 64 gives me a negative 48. And let's actually talk about that for a second. Remember, what's underneath the radical, we call that the discriminant. So that is, this is one tool that I could use to see if x squared plus 4x plus 16 can be simplified, is I could see if the discriminant is negative. If the discriminant is negative, it cannot be factored using real integers or real numbers. Because if the discriminant is negative, that means that our answers are going to be non-real solutions. So one thing that you can always do when we have a trinomial is find the discriminant, and that'll tell you if it's a positive, that tells you that it can be factored using real numbers. So this cannot be factored using real numbers, so we have to use the um, quadratic formula to figure out what our solutions would be. So now, recall from um, what we talked about earlier in this chapter, this square root of negative 48, you can't do anything with that. So what we do is we factor out a 9, that makes that positive. And the square root of 48, well, that's the same as uh, 16 times 3. And 16 is a, um, is a perfect square. So the square root of 6, so this is the same. Here's what I'm getting at. As a square root of 16 times 3. And the square root of 16 is 4. So this piece here simplifies to be 4 times the square root of 3. So an essential, essentially what we have in the numerator is negative 4 plus or minus 4i times the square root of 3 all over 2. And now what we want to do is we want to break that up into two pieces. We'd have negative 4 over 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 3 divided by 2. And so now to get my solutions, I would take negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, plus or minus 4i divided by 2 would be 2i, so it would be 2i squared of 3. So this would be our answer. It would be negative 2 plus 2i squared of 3, negative 2 minus 2i squared of 3, and then the 4 that we got back here at the beginning. So those would be all the things that I could cube and end up getting 64. So that's a complicated situation where we use the sum and difference of cubes theorem. Let's look at this one. This one, they just want to factor um, this uh, polynomial, 27a cubed minus 8b to the sixth power. Now, just like we mentioned in previous videos, you always look for greatest common factor first. And this has no greatest common factor. So now I want to figure out, well, I want to figure out what my x or what my y would be. What would I cube to get 27a cubed? That would be my x. What would I cube to get 8b to the 6th power? That would be my y. Well, my x would end up being the cubed root of each of that. Or what would I cube to get that? would be 3a. Because if I cube 3, I get 27. If I cube a, I get a cubed. My y value here, as far as what I would use in this equation, well, the cube root of 8 is 2. Now, what would I cube to get... Um, b to the 6th power, well, that's going to be b squared. Because recall from our um, exponents, my power of exponents theorem, if we have b squared and cube that, we would, if I have b squared and I would cube that, I would multiply those exponents together, and that would give me b to the 6th power. So basically, all you'd have to do to get b squared is one way that you could do this to figure out what I would cube to get b to the 6th power. Just take 6 divided by 3, and that would give you your answer. OK, so now I'm going to use these two pieces and plug them into this formula. So again, it's a difference of cubes. So I start with my x minus my y. So it's going to be 3a minus. So it's going to be the 
We always start with the same sign using that SOAP acronym. So it'll be 3a minus 2b squared in parentheses. And now what we were going to do is we're going to have our first terms, or our x value squared. Well, 3a, when you square that, becomes 9a squared. And then it's going to be the opposite sign, so it's going to be plus. My x and y multiply together. Well, 3a times 2b squared will be 6ab squared. And then it's always positive. So my y value squared. Well, 2, when you square that, gives you 4. b squared, when you square that, you get b to the fourth power. So this would be our final answer. 3a minus 2b squared multiplied by 9a squared plus 6ab squared plus 4b to the fourth. Why don't you guys try one on your own? Well, actually, I'll help you, help you get this one set up, and then I'm going to have you carried out the rest of the way. Uh, but this one, we have x cubed plus 10. Now, it looks a little bit different because you might think, well, I can't think of anything that I would cube to get 10. Well, we'll get to that in a second. The first thing that we'll find, though, is our value for x is just x in this case. Our value for y in our equation, because when we cube x, we would get x cubed. Our value for y, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because you might say, well, what, what can I cube? There's no integer. You're right, there is no integer I could cube to get 10. But the cubed root of 10, if I were to cube that, oops, let me write my 3 better here. If I were to cube that, the cube and the cubed root would end up canceling each other out, giving us 10. So our value for y that we're going to use in this equation is going to be the cubed root of 10. So why don't you guys take a minute, and using what we know now for our x and for our y, why don't you go ahead and simplify this or factor this down. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So again, this is a sum of two cubes. So we're going to start out with the same sign, so it's going to be x plus the y value, so x plus the cubed root of 10 followed by your x squared, then the opposite sign, times your x and y multiplied together. So in this case, it's x times the cube root of 10. Plus, it's always positive, the y squared. Now, if you might have had cube root of 10 squared. Now, you can simplify that because when you square 10, you'd get 100. So we would have the cube root of 100 as your answer. So that is the factored form for x cubed plus 10. Now we're actually going to end this video here. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to factor sums and difference of all odd powers. If it's not just x cubed plus y cubed, if it's not just two odd exponents, or not just two cubes, we're going to find how to factor whether it's any kind of odd exponent. So with that, we'll stop this video. And you can watch that next video, like I said, to learn how to do this next half of our lesson.